Okay, there you go. Hold on. Yep. Oh. Hey, good afternoon, Jerry. How are you? I'm great. And yourself? This is Councilman Marmoreau. This will be very informal. Strat, there's other people in the meeting. Yes, you are. And so is Johanny. Yes, Councilwoman Hinnerschitz. Okay, and also, who's that? Uh, Johanny. Cepeda Freitas. They will also be sitting in on this. Okay? All right. Good Hi, afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You have anything to say? You want to say something, Marsha? Go ahead. No, I just wanted to make sure we recognize that other people were on virtually. My fault. I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, Jerry. You know what this uh, position? You know what it is, what the job entails, and to you know why we have a commission like this. Well, I got an idea, but I was hoping maybe you can help me fill me in a little bit on what it all entails that I can be a better service if, if I'm accepted into the, the committee. Well, with your background, I'm sure you're, you would be a big help. How's that? <laughs> yes. Would you want a little bit of legislative background, how we got here? Go ahead, Jerry. Yes, basically, I have done some uh, projects with the mayor and Nate Rivera in the city during the COVID. Uh, we did a gun buyback. We did testing. Right. What, and we have gotten into some conversations about, you know, what I was doing and uh, what was my uh, previous employment before I became a pastor. And I shared with them my position with Empire Wrecking uh, for over 35 years. And uh, the conversation came up about the blight property. So I said I would consider and after much prayer and thought, I figured that I would put in the application. And I think with my experience and knowing that I tore down a lot of properties that were falling down in the city of Reading, I might be some help uh, on this committee. The word help sounds good. <laughs> a lot of people like to be on committees, but they don't like to the help. They just well, want to see their names on the paper. Well, if I won't be any help, I wouldn't be here. Well, and with your background, you are a pastor, is this correct? Yes, I am, sir. All right. And that man watches over you. Yes, he does. <laughs> and you as well, and everyone as well. Okay. Do you have any suggestions on how we can improve what we're doing right now? Well, I don't know about what, we, what you're doing right now, but I do believe there's a great need in the city of Reading for us to look at some of these properties and see how they can be used and utilized to help the community. Uh, as you already know now what's going on uh, with the monitoriums, with these people not being able to pay their rent and whatnot. There's plenty of light properties in the city that I'm not able to see and look at and see if they're even rehabable. But uh, it will be a great asset to the city's tax base if we can get these properties that are not being used or just being run down to get them back on board to be uh, people can live in them or have businesses in them and it'll bring a tax base to the city. Okay, Marcia, you have something for Jerry? Yeah, uh, just Jerry, did you have a chance, did anyone share with you the ordinance that uh, formed the Blighted Property Review Committee? Yes, I have a, a right here in front of me uh, some of the things that I've looked up online myself. Oh, great. Uh, but you can share your personal experience with me. I would greatly appreciate that. Well, I think from my point of view, it's always uh, referred to as the broken window theory, is that you have one or two properties on a block that bring down the whole condition of the block. And so the Blighted Property Review Committee was looked at as a tool to be able to address those, maybe get the owners to move forward before it moved into either needing demolition due to safety issues, or mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times the properties just go on their own. Okay. And it's been interesting for me, uh, you know, living in the city, I have a blighted property owned by a bank, caddy quarter from my home, beautiful craftsman home, uh, was beautiful, but it's been sitting empty now for six years. And it's either probably going to burn down, the garage is collapsing behind it, mm -hmm. or, you know, and it's just one example of how we're losing some really uh, worthwhile properties in the city, just because uh, the owner's 
are unwilling or unable to care for him. Any thoughts on that at all? Well, <laughs> banks have the money. <laughs> right. But if they're not willing to be fair with the people that may be interested in it, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. As I right. said earlier, I have been through many emergency demolitions through the city of Reading in my years with uh, Empire Wrecking. And it's just a shame as you look around the city, you see these properties, they're just sitting there. Uh, I do believe there's one down on Spruce Street between 4th and 5th. Mm -hmm. it's, it's bad, you know, and it's a danger for anybody to walk by those uh, properties that are not being taken care of. Is there anything that can be done to force these banks to uh, do something if they're not going to uh, sell them or whatever? I don't know, uh, but that's one of the questions that I would ask. What are they going to do? Is there something that the uh, city can do to enforce them or go through the process and let them know that these properties are not uh, being used and they're being run down and they're becoming an uh, empty lot? You know, that somebody might potentially get hurt. And I think that's a really uh, good thought. I think it needs to be in collaboration of the committee with the administration and council is maybe we need to put more teeth in the ordinance. Look what we can do legally. But it's my my belief is the banks, the people with the money are the ones that are letting these properties go where they are, end up. I think the banks are waiting to see how much money they could get them for. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I and then they'll turn around. They'll turn around. And right now there is a boom on homes being sold in the city of Reading. Yes. And I'm amazed that people that are interested in these homes that would be interested in these homes do not apply. So you get one or two of them, fix them up and sell them as nice homes for the prices you can get them. Maybe, maybe you can bring that up at some of your meetings. Yes, well, that was one of my goals before God called me into the ministry when I retired from Empire to to buy properties and fix them up uh, to help people that are actually trying to matriculate out of whatever conditions they might have been into drug addiction or prisons to give them an opportunity, use it as a stepping stone to let them know that you can do this. But unfortunately, I've been called into the ministry so I don't have the time to do all that. <laughs> Not physically. Do we have jo uh, Joanna on? Johanny? Yeah. Yes, she's Johanny. I thought so. Johanny, you have anything for the gentleman? Yep. Yes, Jerry. I'm just curious, <clears throat> once appointed, uh, what are you looking to do your first three months on the committee? Well, I want to be able to grab a hold of what the whole committee is uh, trying to do together and help in any way I can to uh, give some input with my experiences with uh, the light properties that I've torn down and basically listen uh, for the first meeting or so to see where we can go from there. But to gather all the information that I can uh, for those who have been on the committee and do what I can to help us uh, to get to these properties and do something positive about it to bring our city back. Make a, a, an idea or a sense. Some of the uh, past meetings um, have been virtual. I don't know if you want to okay. take a look or if you want to read some minutes. Just so you get a kind of like a feel for for where we're at with some of these properties and so that, on. It's always yeah, helpful. That will be very helpful. You know, this is the first committee that I ever sit on with the city, uh, uh, if accepted. Uh, but I would like to make sure that when I get into uh, the work, that I will have a positive effect, not just sitting a lump on the wall, and not doing anything. But I think that would be good to get some minutes that I can read and see what you guys have been talking about in the past and how I can bring some ideas to the table to help us move forward. Anyone else? Jerry. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm Hello? sorry. Go ahead. No, I just want to, I'm always grateful for, uh, you know, community members who are always trying to step up to the plate, trying to serve, give back. You know, so I just want to thank you in advance for just your desire and willingness to always serve our community. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. for Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for this. You know yes. what the meetings are? <laughs> I, yes, I know what meetings are. <laughs> Will you have any problem making the meetings? No, it depends. You know, as a pastor, you know, anything can come up. Uh, but I will 
work on clearing my schedule when the meetings are available. But if I would lose someone uh, to death in my congregation, I hope you would understand that I would not be able to make that particular meeting. But uh, at this point, except that I will make sure my schedule is cleared. I think it's only once a month. Yes, it's a third Thursday at and 6 Thursdays, p.m. Thursdays are fine for me. Okay. Anything else? Okay, we'll go over everything we talked about here and you'll be contacted by this young lady over here to my right and letting you know when you're gonna come in and sign some papers. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. And when she contacts me, if they accept me, have her send some papers, some minutes to me so I can begin to read them. <laughs> yeah, I will do that. <laughs> okay. All right, God bless you all. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Have a good night, Jerry. You as well. Look at this beautiful girl we have on television. <laughs> and is that Rebecca? Yes. And how are you, Rebecca? This is Councilman Marmor. Very Councilman... good, thank you. How are you? Okay, Con Councilwoman Hinnishitz is also Hi, on. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Very nice to see you. I um, like your background. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, well, you know why that's there. <laughs> I'll have to learn how to do that. Cepeda Freitas. Yeah, Frank, Johanna, she's also the known, yeah. Strat always jacks up my last name. It's okay. He does it to mine, too. I want to talk to John. It's all good. It's all good. I don't laugh at you. I just listen to Rebecca. Tell us why you'd like to serve on this. Well, I am, I'm a local resident and I absolutely love the city of Reading. Um, I love all the parks. I love the history of Reading. Um, I grew up outside of Reading and it just has a special place in my heart. Um, I also love getting my kids and my family outside on the hiking trails and at the playgrounds. We walk to the library, we walk to our neighbors' houses, we just love the community and we would love to see it shine even brighter. Um, and I would love to be a part of that, to serve the community in a greater capacity, to see Reading at its fullest potential. Well, and I'm glad to hear you talk about kids, okay? Yes. <laughs> They're the next generation that's going to take over. Absolutely. And we have to have a beautiful place for them to work and play and everything else. Especially now, we're starting to do a lot of work right now on playgrounds. Yes. Okay, and that's very important, very important. What other suggestions would you have at this point? Suggestions, you said? Yes. I personally would like to see some more uh, citywide cleanups. Um, I've been a part of a lot of grassroots, um, smaller cleanups and church cleanups. It would be awesome to have something more citywide because sometimes the grassroots don't always have the means to promote it as much as um, a citywide uh, council would be able to do. Um, I know that's something my family has been a part of. So that is usually on the forefront of my mind for the cleanup portion. I would also like to be a part of educating um, some more education awareness to the community, maybe at some of the public libraries, since that's a lot of places mm -hmm. where kids and families go. So we can educate them about better cleanup, better environmental practices as well. So actually getting our hands dirty, getting out in the community, and then also educational awareness. Well, you keep mentioning cleanup, and that's I love to hear that. Mm -hmm. I remember when my wife used to do that and I'd go with her in the blocks, you know, around where we lived. And that's, that's an important issue. Mm -hmm. And it sort of dropped off in the last couple of years. Am I right or am I wrong? I think so. Um, I know, I, I mean, I'm not aware of all the budgeting. I know there might've been 
in the budget for people to actually do that on a full-time basis at some of the parks you know, that's dropped off on uh, Pandora, but I know a lot of the grassroots are starting to grow and would love to see that be uh, better supported, better funded um, if possible. But yes, I mean, we can always do more. And I think the educational awareness side of it would also help the community and continue to bring us together to show that one person's actions affects the rest of the community. Yes. Marcia, go for it. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you for your service to the community. Very much appreciated. And I agree with what you're saying about the cleanups. I think my concern has always been, and I just wanted your thoughts, is you have a lot of good intentioned and well-meaning community people that clean up, but they aren't the ones responsible for necessarily causing the problem. Any thoughts on how we might be able to change people's uh, behaviors or you know accepted norms as far as trashing places? And um, our parks are the ones that get hit the hardest, yes. I think. And that's where I'm, I've been trying to toss around things in my head in regards to the educational awareness piece and maybe being able to do some of those things at the public libraries or even the schools where people are continually frequenting and they're already congregating there to be able to share information about what good environmental practices are because maybe that's not a norm in some families. And I think it would start there. Um, and being able to teach personal stewardship and then be able to teach community stewardship. Exactly. Yeah, I like that approach. One of the, and when, when we look at what we do with the environment, some of it's done through practices and programs. Other things is legislatively. Mm -hmm. And something we've been tossing around more recently is a ban on plastic bags. Any thoughts on that at all? The ban on plastic bags? Yeah, and I think you know from living where you do, you know, along Pandora, what, what happens to a lot of the plastic bags and what they do to they the environment. They just blow around. <laughs> and they get caught in the tree branches and, okay. I think uh, the biodegradable plastic bags or paper bags would be great. I'm not sure how that would work for cleaning up dog poop. Um, if that's financially feasible for some families to do that and just for, I mean, it's great for cleaning up trash, but then we also have sometimes a dog poop problem as well. Right, right. But I would love that. Anything that's more environment, environmentally friendly, whether it's the biodegradable side or just paper bags would be awesome. Yeah. And then I want to take it to a bigger level, just getting your thoughts on, we're seeing a lot of very, crazy weather lately. Any thoughts on global warming and that whole impact? I personally, from my own personal perspective, I feel a lot of it relates back to farming practices mm -hmm. because the overuse of pesticides, whether spraying at the parks, because there are other things that we can do to help maintain parks and still keep it look nice without right. spraying pesticides that kill the plant's natural abilities to absorb the carbon dioxide. So That's we see a lot of it re is related to a lot of our farming practices. And we're personally a part of um, Rodale Institute and other organic farming circles to be able to promote and educate that with people both in their personal gardens at home. So those would be other things, part of the educational awareness. And I would love to bring that even from a citywide uh, scale to implement those kind of practices at our parks because it's safer for kids. Um, you're going to have less health issues because a lot of the pesticides are causing cancer and other health chronic health conditions, but then it's safer for our pollinators. It's safer, it's gonna be able to allow the plants that are already in existence to absorb CO2 to actually help the global warming issue. Yeah, that, that's a really great perspective. I like the looking at how you can drill down and make a difference. So, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what the Environmental Advisory Council does. So that it, it, they, uh, I've attended most of their meetings and I think they're always looking for fresh ideas. So that would be a great thing to bring to the table. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. Joanna, you're next. Yes. Hi, Becky, and thank you for um, your interest in serving on this board. Um, any, any thoughts on recycling projects, composting, with the number of like businesses, especially in the food industry, that have so much waste and how to, how to put that to use? There have been, I've seen out in California, they've, at least from the restaurant side, 
they've taken a lot of um, restaurant waste and they actually have composting um, bins where, and even from a personal side too. So you have your recycling bin, but then you'll also have a composting bin and then they can actually take it to a composting site. That would also have to be implemented. You have a recycling center, but then we would need a composting center. Um, so depending on financial perspectives and budgeting to be able to implement a composting center and then bring the education awareness to the community about putting your food scraps into these bins to be able to be collected so that it can actually go to a composting center that can then be used by local farms. Um, people can come and use it for community gardens. It can be used to be spread even on the local parks, the public parks. So it would be a more of a long-term project, not necessarily a short-term. Um, but that's one idea that I love that they implemented out in California. Would love to see that more widespread. And yeah, I would love to see that as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, recycling. I know we try to do a lot of recycling with projects, our projects. I'm not hundred percent sure. I haven't really brainstormed for myself personally on how to do that on a larger scale to take a lot of materials that you have to recycle it into art projects and be able to reuse that, whether in the schools or locally. And then there might be making sure things are cleansed and properly cleaned before use too. So I would have to further brainstorm that out before I would actually have a viable suggestion towards that. And also um, one of the things that I often find within a community is that members don't understand why uh, the importance of recycling. So any ideas on how to better communicate or incentivize folks to participate in recycling and being more environmentally conscious? Is there maybe potential kickbacks towards their water, sewer, and trash bill if they actually participate in the recycling? Um, I don't want to say the more recycling you have, because then that could just incentivize more trash. Um, mm -hmm or maybe the less trash you have in your trash bin, maybe there could be a kickback there. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, just just curious, you know, every time, you know, when I look at like other cities and how um, other cities have created like these, they've taken like vacant lots, for example, and you know, people collect cans and they collect bottles and they, drop them off and they get paid for some of these items. I'm always curious as to why we don't, we don't necessarily have something like that here, but I think that's a, a state level issue. When you go to Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, people get mm -hmm. paid for their bottles. So I'm always curious if, if that's something that would, would incentivize folks to like recycle, be mindful. Could that be a transportation issue maybe for some people? Um, cause I know a lot of people here may not be able to drive or physically get to certain locations. Um, and you may not want all those things going on the bar to bus to get to the recycling plant. I'm just wondering if that would be a transportation issue for some, if it wasn't being picked up right outside of their house to be able to drive, but I'm not sure. It's a, uh, yeah, just, just was trying to, um, I guess, pick your brain. Just curious as to what some of your thoughts were related to that. We don't have the answers. I was just curious. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Not at this point, no. Rebecca, do you have any idea how we can get all this information out to the public? We must educate the people who are it's just you and I talking here, okay? Right. We need to get this out to the people and let them know what should be done and what they're doing wrong. If I may give you a minute, I was coming into City Hall today. I'm waiting for a, at a four-way stop. Mm -hmm. A person came through and almost hit me. And when I went to say something to him, they use some pretty good language, okay? While this is going on, a car pulls up alongside of me and they throw a bag of trash out on the street. And I told them about it. They told me the same thing. So we need to educate these people. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you can't do this. If you want to live in a in a nice environment, we not we got to keep our homes, our streets, our towns nice. Not just for us, but for the people that visit us. Absolutely. At one of the cleanups over at Pandora Park, I remember talking to one of the uh, county workers there, and she said that it was very disheartening to me to hear this, but she was at one of the cleanups and watched one of the uh, local residents drive by and just drop trash out and asked, you know, why are you doing that? You know, obviously yelling from a distance. And she said, well, that's what my taxes are for. Exactly. And instead of encouraging personal stewardship, some of these practices that we've implemented in our world just discourage personal responsibility and encourage projecting the responsibility on others. And well, so it's, it is a fight. Um, it's both educating the mind and then getting into a normal practice with the body too, and being able to create new rhythms and new habits. Um, I know implementing the public libraries, possibly being able to bring some of this information to the school boards to be able to pass on to parents and children and families, um, being able to encourage local churches so we can get in touch with the Berks County uh, Council of Churches as well to be able to pass any institution that we can have that actually touches the community on a regular basis. I would say we would want to mobilize and be able to reach out to um, I mean, lots of people do door-to-door -door flyers for cleanups. We can do door-to-door -door, um, communications. And if people are home to be able to talk to them, myself being a part of a lot of moms groups on Facebook, we can utilize mm -hmm. social media as well and being able to reach out to moms communities and whether homeschool or public school, whether it's during the day or in the evening. Um, I know I'm talking to people individually when I'm at the playgrounds and we talk openly with other parents and kids sometimes when we see kids dropping things on the ground and just setting that example and trying to coach them, you know, in a respectful way. Okay, right here's a trash can. We can all walk our, our 10 steps to the trash can and drop it in and give each other high fives and make a game out of it. Um, yep. So being able to, yeah. Anything else, anyone? Well, Rebecca, you know when the meetings take place for this uh, board? It's a, this uh, fourth Tuesday of the month at noontime. Is that a problem? You said fourth Tuesday at noon? Yes. No, it's not a problem. I, I can certainly to... make myself available during that time. Um, even I'm, with sure my kids. Able... I'm sorry. I was saying even with my kids, I would either have a babysitter or Sometimes that's during nap time anyway. So it's downtime, rest time, and I'm able to do what I'm doing right now, just another quiet space in my house. So <laughs> it's absolutely doable for me. And I'm sure you'll be a, a wonderful addition to this Environmental Advisory Council. Okay, anyone else? No, I just wanna thank you for uh, being willing to become engaged. I know you already have been doing a substantial amount of work. So this is a great next step. It's definitely something I've wanted to do for a while. And after a few other community friends and families nudged me again and again and again, I said, okay, finally, it, it's time to, <laughs> to go in this direction because I would love to be more involved as much as I can in this area since it's a deep-seated passion of mine. Great. Well, you're, you're the kind of person we need. And again, thank you. Thank you so and much you, for having me. And you will be contacted by Shelly. Thank you, Shelly. I love your sunflowers. Thank you. We just visited Rose Orchard yesterday and saw all the beautiful sunflowers too. So. <laughs> all right, have a good okay. evening. You guys Great uh, meeting you, take care. Thank you, bye-bye. We're done in the pine room, right? In the pen room, yes. Is there anything else for today? Nope. All right. I think we're fine. <laughs>